Can you all hear me okay? If you can't hear me okay in the back, come and join me in the front. The seats are comfortable, <laughs> the snacks are up here, I'll be nice to you. But um, welcome, it's great to be here. Uh, I have the honor and privilege of guiding you through the next two and a half hours. If you so choose to accept the mission of being in this room for the next two and a half hours, uh, we have five great sessions lined up. However, I want to dwell on the past. A year ago down in South Bay, I had an opportunity to do a keynote on the topic we're going to talk most about over the next two and a half hours, multi-channel. Last year, uh, after being a little bit clumsy, I arrived to do the keynote with a sling and a black eye. Uh, I was out cycling and uh, unfortunately hit a little, little bit of a rock and broke my arm and shoulder in four places. Uh, my brain apparently is still intact, although some will argue it's not. Uh, but this year I've been extra careful and I made it in one piece to come here. So I'm very happy about that. I, uh, thank you. I, um, I have traveled a lot uh, as a brief introduction to my background. In case you're wondering about my strange accent, um, I have lived and worked on five continents. I've done seven intercontinental moves in the last couple of decades. I'm born and raised in Denmark. Um, haven't worked much in Denmark a couple of years. I worked and lived in Africa for more than 10 years. I've also worked and lived in the Middle East, um, in Istanbul, Turkey. Also some time in Asia where I was based out of Bangkok, but spent most of my time in China. And for the last eight years, almost eight years, coming up to eight years this summer, I've been here in the US on the West Coast. Uh, I'm a proud Seahawks supporter and Sander <laughs> supporter. So go Sanders, won this weekend against New York. But anyway, uh, so as you may guess, uh, I, live, um, I live occasionally up in Seattle, but I spend most of my time on the road and a lot of the time here in the Bay Area. I work at Dropbox and I've been coming up this summer to having spent two years at Dropbox and it has been a fantastic journey. Now, before I talk about Dropbox, let me just share with you briefly what I did before Dropbox. I spent uh, 14 years for a small software company up in Seattle uh, that has offices in many countries and, and have built products such as Windows and Office and Office 365. Um, and one of the roles that I did, the last role I did for Microsoft was the last six years I spent with Microsoft was as global vice president for their SMB business. So in other words, driving for Microsoft, what all of us here wants to do, which is drive cloud, cloud transformation into SMB customers across the world. Now, um, I took those learnings, I took the success that undoubtedly Microsoft have enjoyed in that space. Uh, many of those learnings, but with a Silicon Valley, with a Bay Area uh, spice added to it, with an entrepreneurial spirit, and with a lot of energy and exciting partners in distribution, in channel, in online sales, and in outbound direct enterprise sales, and went ahead of building a multi-channel model at, uh, at Dropbox. And I'm going to talk about that um, over the next 15, 20 minutes. Before I get into that, though, I'd like to orient you to the plan for the next couple of hours, the next two and a half hours. So we have a set of amazing, actually I would go as far as saying fabulous speakers who have some traveled far um, and have done it on their own bill, own time and out of investment and respect and courtesy to you and to this audience. So often I want to say thank you to Carol, to Rene, to Kevin and Oren for the investment they made in coming here, preparing for today and undoubtedly uh, having some, some thoughts, ideas and experiences to share with you that we'll all, lear all learn a ton from. So the, the outline for the next two and a half hours <clears throat> is I'll take you through a very quick approach to my experience of how to go about in winning SMBs through multi-channel. In other words, how can you sell effectively to SMBs, not just through one channel, but different types of channels. Then a uh, TV host, presenter, and many other interesting experiences behind her name that I'll take you through shortly. Uh, Carol Roth will talk to you about what is an SMB? How do they work? What do they care about? How to talk to them? How to market to them? So you've got something to look forward to there. Then Re Rene Bergeron, the SVP um, and global leader of the cloud business, the cloud channel at Ingram Micro, the biggest, largest, most globalized technology distributor in the world. We'll talk about how they are enabling 
resellers, MSPs, CSPs, hosters, system builders, retailers, e-tailers, you name it, across the world to join the cloud journey. Then we'll hand over to Kevin O'Brien, who is the, today the VP of Strategic Alliances at Jazz HR. He has had <coughs> success with building reseller or channel programs at a number of vendors, and he's going to share with us what's the path to success in building a reseller network, a partner program. And then finally, under the fascinating title of Dreams, Dogs, and Love Languages of the Channel, I'm excited to also later on introduce you to Oren Klopper, who is the founder, CEO, and owner of a, a multinational MSP CSP with offices across the world in Asia, in Africa, and here in North America. And he'll talk to you about the perspective of being an MSP, a CSP, a reseller, if you like, what it means in terms of working with vendors, culturally how to work with vendors, and really how you deliver against, as the heading says, the dreams and, and, and so forth to, to build an amazing business. So that's the outline for the next uh, two and a half hours. So last year, um, I had been with Dropbox, I guess, eight, nine months. So I was early in my journey of coming from an incredibly impressive and highly successful software and now cloud company, Microsoft, up in Seattle, and arriving at a smaller, scrappier, but very successful cloud company, born in the cloud company, Dropbox. And as I arrived at, <clears throat> at Dropbox, I found a business that had been born in the cloud, initially focusing on serving consumers, then small businesses, then businesses in education, and then also, gradually as I was arriving there, starting to serve meaningfully the enterprise segment. Now, it's a business that has made a tremendous amount of progress over the years. Today, um, as the globe indicate, we have connections all over the world. We have more than three billion connections that's been created between users all over the world, representing both individual users and business users. And sometimes it's the same person, but with multiple personalities, so to speak. Multiple use cases, right? May also be multiple personalities. Um, we have millions of businesses where Dropbox has been used every day across the world. And really what you're seeing here is, in this globe, you're seeing the scale of our network. Now, in terms of how we achieve this scale of having millions, hundreds of millions actually, half a billion users, millions of business users, companies that use our product every day, we've gone about it, gone about it in the following way, in terms of how we go to market. We started initially by, <clears throat> as these slides indicate here, here we go, in building an incredibly successful self-serve engine, self-serve business of Dropbox.com. The pyramid here is totally misleading in the sense of the size and importance of this business. This business is one of the largest self-serve SaaS businesses in the world. As a matter of fact, we announced the last day of January, a founder and CEO, Drew, announced and verified by IDC that not only have we as a company exceeded a one billion US dollar revenue run rate, but we're also the fastest SaaS company ever to get to a billion dollar in revenue run rate, faster than Salesforce, than Workday, and other SaaS companies. We're really, really proud about that, and a leading indicator of that is this self-serve business. Look, you understand that customer behavior both in the consumer and the SMB space, it's changed, right? Customers these days, they go and research online, and by the time they get to talk to a reseller, MSP, CSP, a vendor, at that point in time, they probably have made up their mind already what they want, if not actually just placing an order outright online. That's what we're experiencing here. The vast majority, though, of those customers that engage in this space here are what I would call consumers, prosumers, and lower end of SMB, and smaller teams from larger companies as well. 
But when, when we look at the space that we as Dropbox are in, when we look at the space, I call it conventional enterprise companies with, I don't know, 250 or 500 people and above, around about two thirds of our TAM, of our total addressable market, is in that space. Now in that space, you typically find that those customers that are out there, whether they are IT professionals or business decision makers, you find that they typically want to talk directly to a vendor or to their local trusted reseller, MSP, CSP. So we recognized that we had to move on from having not only a self-serve engine, not only an inbound sales engine, which is really more around fulfilling demand from click to chat. We also realized we had to build out an outbound direct sales team. And we now have built out an enterprise outbound sales team where we have sellers in nine countries, 14 offices across the world. Now that's a big investment, right? For a small scrappy startup um, in the cloud space with low ASP, one product. It's proven out to be successful. But um, there is this one thing, right, which is when you look at the space we're trying to address, the SMB space, there are more than 100 million SMB companies in the world that already today have IT. And there's another 100 million plus companies across the world that today have no IT. But they will get IT this afternoon, tomorrow morning, next month, next year, next decade perhaps. Um, and when they do, you all know what they're gonna, gonna get first, right? A smartphone and some cloud. Although they probably don't even know that, the, that it's cloud they're consuming, but that's typically the path they go down. So in this SMB area, 100 million companies today computerized, but typically running on old technology and typically running on premise, and another 100 million that needs to be computerized. To try to reach all these companies purely through your own sales team, and through an online self-serve engine doesn't speak to the reality of how those customers want to be served. It's another way of saying, if you want to win in a programmatic, systematic, wall-to-wall -wall fashion in this SMB space, you have to go full multi-channel. And full multi-channel, in my opinion, means embracing channel. Now, channel is this thing where you may think, but hang on, Thomas, isn't that this old school, boring, dusty old warehouses of tech data, cynics, um, Ingram Micro, SoftBank, and the likes that ship boxes. Well, that was the old days, years ago. What we have today is a world where the channels, starting with the leading distributors, such as Ingram, that we'll hear from later, have embraced the cloud and have built virtual warehouses, also known as cloud marketplaces, and are offering up hundreds of vendors or products to their hundreds of thousands of resellers across the world, enabling those more than a million sales reps at more than 100,000 resellers across the world to scalably, programmatically, and low cost for us as vendors to reach those 100, over time, 200 million SMBs who deserve to get exposed to our cloud solutions, to our software solutions. So that's what we've done at Dropbox. So we, uh, we embraced um, distribution. Uh, cloud marketplaces, partnering with Ingram, Cynix, SoftBank. We made a ton of progress. Uh, we now have a, a partner network with more than 5,000 resellers across the world. We're very proud about that. Uh, however, we still believe we're missing a zero in the end. So we still want to move from 5,000 to 50,000, but we're aspirational. Um, we're also very proud that uh, a large portion of those partners are reselling and we've seen good progress and good early signaling that this notion of old school distribution in inverted commas known as cloud marketplaces really is a viable, programmatic, scalable, and profitable path to market for us as cloud vendors. So we feel, uh, we feel pretty, uh, pretty excited about, about where, that, uh, that is, uh, where that is leading us. Now, um, <clears throat> Look, there are only some vendors that have chosen to go down the path of looking at working with a channel 
looking at working with two-tier distribution for cloud services, for SaaS. Uh, one of the, I would guess, an ink, Rene will educate us uh, later on, one of the more successful industries is probably Microsoft. Uh, some of the other larger vendors that you would automatically think of, Salesforce, Amazon, Google, predominantly today, do not go through two-tier channel, or at least not fully end-to-end. -end. So today you have a little bit of a mixed world in terms of who is with channel and who is not with channel. Uh, I come from a point of view which is, I don't know with perfect science what's going to work today or tomorrow. But I'm certainly going to test out through classic A-B testing and figure out what are viable paths and what can provide us some access to those hundreds or at least 100 million of SMBs across the world. So that's why we at Dropbox, we've chosen to embrace a model where we're a little bit like Coca-Cola. If there's a customer out there, they are looking for technology. We want to make sure that they are offered up also a Dropbox solution when they look for technology. So whether our customers online, self-serving, whether they're calling in, we're there to serve them. We are to larger customers engaging with them directly through our enterprise sales force. And we're scaling up through large and small partners all over the world. As we have scaled out our bet on channel, we now have resellers not just signed up for a partner network, but more importantly, transacting, selling Dropbox in 37 countries. And keep in mind, uh, friends, we, we started at Dropbox this journey with Ingram, Cynics, and SoftBank candidly a year ago, uh, shy, just shy of a year ago. And the stats are within our own company, we have our own sellers, direct sellers, who are actually co-selling with Channel in nine countries. And in less than a year, we now have active resellers transacting for us across the world in 37 countries. So it gives you an idea of how to scale a, a global business and how to think about really getting leverage of your product in a, in a far more broad, inclusive fashion. Candidly, I'll say to you, um, many people, when they think about multi-channel, uh, worry about channel conflict. Um, we have constructed our model with a lot of input from folks like Rene to ensure that we have measures, measures in place that counterbalances any, any channel conflict. The thing I'll also say is, look, I think most of you in the room here, unless you're working for any of the big four cloud software companies, most of us in this room are in a place where we have tens of millions of SMB customers out there still to go and capture, right? So the notion of channel conflict between online direct sellers and reseller channel, I wouldn't say it's non-existent, but it's, it's not the biggest worry today. The, the, the big worry, and hence in other words, the big opportunity today is how to go out and capture those 100 million potential SMB companies as customers. So that's a, a little bit of a recap of where um, Dropbox was a year ago in our journey around multi-channel. Uh, it's been an exciting past year. It's been uh, bumpy at times, which is part of the fun. It's part of learning. It's part of tweaking your model. Uh, we've had some lessons throughout the year in terms of the importance of automation, having the right program, having the right systems and tools in place. Anything that's manual is a horrible thing. It breaks. It takes a lot of effort, people, energy, and things go wrong. So that's certainly one of our really, really large lessons from the last year. But we, we certainly very, very pleased with the progress we made on multi-channel. So before, before we transition into the next speaker, I just want to check in the room and see if there's any questions for me in terms of the journey that we have been on here at Dropbox in terms of embracing not just multi-channel, but also two-tier channel. Any feedback, any thoughts from anyone? Yeah, please. Let's just get there. There we go. My, my, uh, my question is simply, <clears throat> at what point in the growth cycle did you, did, did Dropbox start to really kind of enter around channels? So like, what part in your journey did you kind of hit that point where you really felt like this is as a full you know, strategy. Yeah. So, uh, slightly paraphrased, 
the question is, at what phase did Dropbox decide to embrace channel? Um, look, um, there's, there's two answers to the question. There's one which is, when and why did we embrace it? Um, and then there's a question of, should you do it today? Um, in terms of, of, our, um, of our decision to embrace the channel, was very much linked into individuals um, joining Dropbox, um, candidly including myself, with my dark past from another software company up north in Redmond, Seattle, um, but also just looking at, moreover, the opportunity in front of us. Um, we looked at the fact um, that we had half a billion users, our product being used every day in millions of businesses, but not being monetized at that point in that many. And it spoke to us that there was a large opportunity to get an extended sales force out there at a pace we couldn't do it ourselves globally. That's what spoke to us. At the same time, what spoke to us was that there were a couple, and I emphasize only a couple, of vendors that were successfully rolling out their global um, solutions through folks like, uh, like Ingram Micro, and with success lighting up thousands and thousands of, uh, of resellers through their cloud marketplace. My two cents for any of you that's considering going through channel, um, at the end of the day, it comes back to, do you have a freemium model? And if you have large scale adoption through your freemium model, there is an interesting asset and a brand you built already in the market that you can ask resellers to leverage on. If you do not have a freemium model, as is the case at, at Dropbox, it may be a little bit more challenging as a smaller vendor to go out and, 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 and light up channel from, from day one, it typically requires more gifts and gets, more gifts than gets to your two-tier partner, but it may be worthwhile to do it, specifically if you have restrictions in terms of number of people you otherwise yourself can hire to build out your own, uh, your own sales force. So it's a little bit of a, of a trade-off you need to look at, at the stage you're at, how far you are in building out your own sales force and what resources you have available. So I hope that helps. <laughs>